China's progress in synergetic governance of climate change and multiple environmental issues. Jiang Sun Yang, Zhang Zhao, Wen Fang, Zhong Wei Ma, Maya Mido Lu, Jun Bi, PNAS Nexus, Volume 3, Issue 9, September 2024, published the 21st of August 2024. Abstract: Advancing the synergetic control of climate change and environmental crisis is crucial for achieving global sustainable development goals. This study evaluates synergetic governance levels over climate change and for environmental issues at the provincial level in China from 2009 to 2020. Our findings reveal significant progress in China's coordinated efforts to mitigate carbon emissions, reduce air pollutants, and conserve water resources. However, there remains room for improvement in managing solid waste, and protecting ecological systems and overall progress in synergetic governance has slowed since 2015. Employing a random forest model, we identify socio-economic factors with great influence on synergetic climate change and environmental governance, such as energy intensity, service sector development, electronic equipment manufacturing, and transportation. Additionally, we reveal non-linear relationships between some factors and performance of environmental subsystems, including both plateau effects, for example output in the smelting of ferrous metals, and U-shaped patterns, for example output in the manufacturing of metal products, possibly attributed to constraints in end-of-pipe treatment capacities and complexities in supply chain networks. Furthermore, through hierarchical clustering analysis, we classify provinces into four groups, and provide tailored recommendations for policymakers to enhance synergetic governance levels in their respective regions. The framework established in this study also serves as a valuable reference for countries seeking to develop practical and context-specific solutions to mitigate climate and environmental risks. Synergetic governance, carbon mitigation, environmental crisis, China, environmental sciences, policy implications. The study found that there are still gaps in China's current level of environmental governance compared with country-specific targets. Specifically, China has announced the goal to peak carbon emissions by 2030 and achieve net zero emissions by 2060. Yet there remains a significant gap regarding the carbon peak in neutrality targets. Additionally, China's current air quality standards largely fall behind the WHO recommended guidelines. To achieve the recommended air quality goals, it is estimated that a more than 90% reduction in air pollutant emissions compared with 2015 levels is needed, which remains challenging based on the progress observed in this study. China has also proposed ambitious zero-waste city goals, aimed at promoting more comprehensive utilization and lowering the environmental impacts of solid waste. However, our study clearly finds that the performance of solid waste management is not comparable to other sub-environmental systems and requires more effective policy support in the future. Our findings have significant implications for designing more targeted policies to promote climate environment synergetic governance. For major industrial areas, increasing process integrated resource use efficiency and adopting end-of-pipe treatment techniques with synergetic control effects are effective pathways to achieve low carbon development and address multiple environmental issues. 42. It is essential to develop a comprehensive technical priority list for the synergetic control of climate and environmental issues. For example, promoting ultra-low emissions retrofitting in the steel, cement, coking industries, and boilers, enhancing energy-saving measures in wastewater treatment plants, advocating the use of sludge biogas co-generation technology, and advancing the recycling of new types of waste such as decommissioned power batteries, photovoltaic modules, and wind turbine blades. 43. Regions should consider their unique industrial realities and synergetic governance as highlighted in this study, and promote the deployment of specific technologies, or guide investment, and R&D efforts toward these areas. Secondly, Industrial structure adjustment and spatial planning strategies should be established based on balancing carbon and multiple environmental issues. Specifically, energy and industrial development should be guided by regional environmental quality improvement goals. 44. This includes the strategic planning of renewable energy projects, such as photovoltaic and wind power, 
on lands affected by abandoned mines, coal subsidence areas, closed landfills, and polluted sites. 45. Strict entry policies should be enforced to prevent the indiscriminate development of high energy consuming, high emission, and low efficiency projects. A comprehensive approach to greening the entire industrial chain is required, accelerating source reduction, process control, end of pipe treatment, and comprehensive utilization within the industrial sector. Additionally, we find that certain sectors, such as electronic products, which are considered clean and high-tech industries, do not have a linear correlation with the level of environmental governance. This suggests that simply promoting high-tech industry development is not the sole solution for improving environmental performance. Therefore, regions should focus on upgrading traditional high-energy consuming industries like chemical and steel toward more refined and greener practices, while also addressing the carbon pollution synergies in emerging industries, such as data centers. Totally, since climate and environmental governance involves a complex mix of policies, it is essential to enhance the synergy between these ecological, environmental, energy, and industry policies. 46. Our findings indicate that carbon mitigation policies alone, while effective in mitigating carbon emissions, do not address multiple environmental issues. Therefore, it is necessary to ensure coordination and integration between different policies, including CET, electricity trading, dual control of energy consumption, and emission rights. For example, when defining the management boundaries and allocation schemes for CET, it is crucial to consider factors that promote both pollution reduction and carbon mitigation. Additionally, this study uses a relatively coarse scale at the provincial level. We recommend that related evaluations of pollution and carbon reduction synergies be conducted in key cities, industrial parks, and major enterprises. This will help guide regions in optimizing their coordinated management mechanisms and identifying issues across different scales. Jiang Sun Yang, Zhang Zhao, Wen Fang, Zhong Yi Ma, Mayo Melo Lu, Jun Bi, China's progress in synergetic governance of climate change and multiple environmental issues, PNAS Nexus, Volume 3, Issue 9, September 2024, P351, https toy.org slash one zero dot one zero nine three slash penis nexus slash pg three five one